Good news. Today we're going to show you how to repair and fix your broken BT-168 battery tester. Hey guys, NJRoot22.com here with another how to fix them up vlog. Now you have this, where is it? Where's my stupid uh, battery tester? I, I, I left it, uh, I'll put it up on the screen here. You have this uh, BT-168 battery tester, right? And it used to work, but now it no longer works. What do you do? Do you uh, throw it out and buy another one or do you try to fix it yourself? In today's uh, tutorial, we're gonna show you how to do it. But just note, before we continue, this is for super duper mega advanced students only. And I would like you to repair this at your own risk. We don't uh, hold you, don't hold us responsible for anything that goes on. This is some seriously advanced techniques. Let's get started. Hey there, njroot22.com here. We're gonna fix, this is our how-to series here, and we're gonna fix, or try to fix, a BT-168 battery tester. Now, these things are like five or 10 bucks online. If you don't wanna be bothered, you can just buy another one. Uh, but we don't like doing that. We like trying to fix things first. So the first thing I want to say here is that I found that this is broken. Because um, if I test the battery, nothing happens. But if I test a 9-volt battery, it works. That means this, there's something broken inside. That's when you can determine that one thing is broken and one thing works. Uh, just to show you here is a digital one and I will test it. It says 1.39 volts and just to show you that the battery was good this battery says 9.88 volts. So I know the batteries are good and the battery tester is bad. So like we learned in a previous video we know how to unscrew something. So I'm going to unscrew this uh, battery tester and look inside. Maybe there's something broken. So I'm going to unscrew it counterclockwise or anti-clockwise as I like to say. And I'm going to look inside. Maybe there's something broken. So once we take it apart, you can pry it open. This came apart pretty good. I open it up and there's all sorts of resistors and things to regulate the voltage, but I can see right away that this wire came apart from here. It's just plainly obvious that this just has to be resoldered. Now, I don't have my uh, wire stripper with me, but there's enough metal left here for me to just heat it up and, and solder it back on. You don't want any of these wires touching each other because they could cause a problem later on. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn on my gas-powered soldering iron here. This is easy peasy lemon squeezy as they say. And I'm gonna turn it on and it'll take maybe a minute for it to heat up. I have solder over here and I'm just gonna basically heat this up right here and just melt this back on. Be careful with solder. You should probably wear your um, eye goggles and wear gloves of some kind. But uh, I'm not gonna do that here. I'm just gonna turn the soldering iron on. I think I'm out of gas. What a drag. I'm out of gas. I'm gonna have to pause the video and fill my Benzomatic up with gas. What a pain. I'll be back in a sec. So instead of filming, uh, filling this up off the air, I'm just gonna show you. Here's my Benzomatic butane, and you stick the little hole right on there, and you just fill it up for a few seconds. And you hear it starts like hissing and that means it's full. So I'm done with that. Now I should be able to light this thingamabob up and let this heat up. There's a little stand built in so you could not burn anything. So I'm going to turn it on. Now it's going. Now that's lit. I'm going to let that heat up for a minute. I'm going to get my solder ready. It's going to need a little bit. I don't need a whole lot. This is going to take like three seconds. So I got my solder ready to go. Now while this thing is heating up here, you know, it would really be helpful to have a, a pair of helping hands, they're called. They're little um, 
because I only have two hands as you can see here. And I have one, two, three, four points. So if I had a pair of helping hands, you can look, go Google those. You could see, you can get them anywhere. They're little clamps that can hold things together. So I can use my two working hands and the two other hands. But I'm gonna try and keep this close enough together so that I can, uh... but what I wanna do over here real quick is I'm just gonna try and heat this up for a second and just melt some solder on there. A whole lot of it and I, I have a few seconds before it gets cold so there we go the solder's melting now while that's melting I'm going to take this wire here I kind of ran into a problem here because now the two wires are falling apart which is a pain in the ass this is why you need helping hands You always wear safety goggles. So that seems to be connected now. It takes only like five seconds for it to cool. So I, I think there's a good enough connection there. I'm gonna turn my soldering iron off. You should always have a wet sponge nearby to wipe the tip off, but I'm not gonna do that now. I'll just uh, wait till next time. Now, the, uh, the wire is, is properly attached. See, I'm kind of sloppy when it came to doing that. I'm not a perfectionist. A lot of people are perfectionists. They want, I mean, there's a, there's a good uh, benefit for being a little bit of a perfectionist because then you save yourself trouble later on. And I'm just gonna stick this back on, make sure all the wires are hidden properly. And it seems like it's back together. This moves. We'll test it before we screw it back. Here's a battery. It works. See, I fixed it. So that's it. I'm going to screw it back together. It's, it's simple. It's just identifying what went wrong. This one was easy. Sometimes they're hard. Have a good day.